Instagram, I am Alice and I am afraid it has finally happened. The summer is over. My favourite season is gone. But it's okay, we can just like just solve these mixed feelings about how the sunny days are gone. Not like there was any sunny days here in England while I was here this summer. But we have Halloween coming and that is great because it's the season in which cosplayers don't look weird because everybody is gonna get dressed in fancy dresses so we will blend in. Yay! This year I wanted to go back to the classics and I decided to make a vampire cloak because you know, I kind of like cloaks and I have made quite a few cloaks in the past, I believe. So the character I chose is actually Mavis from Hotel Transylvania and I thought that I would get this chance to just make different types of cloaks. I completely remade this pattern and it's completely new because it's gonna fit different, it's gonna just be doing something else and in this video I'm going to show you how to make those colours that defy gravity and I'm sure many of you will be looking forward to see what's the secret behind them. As usual, I like to start my cosplays with a sketch. If you're not very good at drawing or if you are good at drawing but can't be bothered starting from scratch, you can use my cosplay planner that comes with blank pages to draw your sketches as well as many other things so you can get an idea of what your final design could look like. I am going to be making a cloak below the knee with a round colour and I will also make Mavis bodycon dress and arm warmers. For the tights and shoes I will just be using whatever I have at home because I'm not going for a 100% accurate cosplay. But if you want to be 100% accurate you know what you need, right? That's right, Mocha Queen contact lenses because all good monsters will have all colors in their eyes and Mocha Queen is an amazing place where you can buy your contact lenses and they can be any color like this Aquaman yellow or maybe this green werewolf. This will really make your cosplay complete. For my Mavis cosplay I chose this Luna Eclipse Blue which I really like but there are many more options to choose from and if you are in the US they will be shipping within one to four days. Thank you so much Moco Queen for sponsoring this video and don't forget to use the code ALICECOS for a 10% off. And now, let's go back to sewing. Okay, I have already done my sketches so I have a plan of what I need to make for Mavis and actually last weekend I already started with the patterns and I have made a vampire cloak pattern and a bodycon dress pattern that I have to assemble and test. As always remember you can just get your own patterns or make your own patterns and experiment but if you want to just like get one which has already been tested and the one that I am using I will give you a link in the description. I'm just going to assemble the pages so I have the full thing and just test those patterns before I use carry on. So I put together all the pieces of the pattern, it looks like a lot and it will need quite a bit of fabric but keep in mind that this has been now been blessed by my cat and also that this is the full version for both patterns because I'm gonna make them so you can just have different, different lengths for both the dress and the cloak so theoretically I will be needing less fabric for both of them because I'm just going to do them to the knee or something like that so even if it looks like a lot this is for the full pattern so if you are just going to be making navies uh, you can just like cut through the lines but I am going to test it first with some fabric that I have around and I'll let you know how it goes and carry on working as soon as I 
move my cat out of the way. You know that fabric over there? Because I kind of need it to so like a mock up and I have it. Once I had tested my patterns and done any adjustments necessary to fit my body, it was time to make the real thing. Okay, so I have my patterns, I've done my mock-ups, so it's time to cut on the real fabric. And for me, I think the best choice for these cloaks, because they are going to be very big and heavy, and unless you want to use it to go out in a very, very cold night, they are going to be a bit of an inconvenience. For me, the best materials you can use is either kind of like a cotton, so it's like something lightweight or something like satin if you want like the, you know, shiny effect of a very aristocratic vampire. I found this piece of black in my stash and I didn't realize that I had used this as a background in a competition quite a while ago and it still has the drawing on it and it's like kind of funny that it's there. Kitana wants to remind you that in this channel we use weights or cats to just make sure our fabric doesn't move with our pattern on top while we are cutting it. Right Kitana? Anything else to say? No? While I was patterning this I thought that I didn't want a cloak that covered my whole body because I still want to show the dress underneath because I'm going to be making the dress so it would be a shame if I can't see it. So what happens is that in the normal version what's gonna happen is that you are gonna cover completely and it's gonna overlap so if you don't want to show whatever clothes you're wearing underneath this is the best option to cut the cloak like this but because I want to show what dress I'm wearing underneath because I like it if I were to put my pattern like this it means that the cloak will still sit on top, but you will be able to see all that of your dress. Okay, I have measured my fabric and I have just enough, and I mean it, just enough to make the short version of the cloak. And you will notice I have folded my fabric and I'm going to be cutting the back with not no seam at the back. This is because my fabric is very, very wide you may need to cut the back as separate pieces and sew it but other than that it's gonna be exactly the same so i'm just gonna cut the pieces and start assembling my cloak i folded my fabric in half and started cutting the pieces for my cloak the front and the back are so similar that i made both pieces on top of each other to save some paper and also some time but feel free to print it twice if you want to And with all the pieces cut, I had to repeat everything for the lining. Now that I have cut all the pieces for the cloak, what I need to do is just assemble them. And it's very easy because there's only like three seams on this cloak. Two if you use like the white fabric like it is for this one. So. In order to assemble the lining and the outer shell, first of all, I need to sew the center back just so I have the back in one single piece. And when I sew that, I will be sewing the sides as well.
Now, I have already sewn the lining and as you can see, the way it is, even like that, I can just walk around. I don't even need any closure or anything because the cloak is staying because I've made it so it stays on my shoulders. And it's gonna be like very flushy like this. But with the outer side of the cloak also assembled, it was now time to sew the pieces right sides together, leaving the opening at the neck unsewn so we can turn our fabric. Now, let's answer the question that you must be wondering yourself. How are you gonna make this little piece of fabric for the collar stand up? Because obviously this is not going to stand as it is. And the answer is, when I move my cut, not interfacing. But not any interfacing, it needs to be something really heavy like this one which is called Bukram and it's used for things like hats and it will just stay up. So just make sure that if you go to a shop you are asking for something really heavy. As you can see it's almost like paper and it's very very stiff. I traced the color on my bookroom, leaving no seam allowances at the top, and I attached it to my color pieces. And same as before, I sew my fabric right sides together and cut the excess fabric before I turn the color. And I recommend you to top stitch the color if you want to get a nice finish. Once I had ironed the cloak, it was almost finished. So I attached all the layers of my color to the neck of my cloak and I only had to hide the edges with the lining, folding all the seam allowance inwards. Of course I did this by hand because I like sewing it by hand and it looks better, so just try and change my mind. We have a cloak! However, it doesn't have like the sturdiest colour, it doesn't stand up, but I notice if I'm moving around it kind of like flops down still and that is not perfect and I know why it's happening. The first reason is the interfacing that I used was very weak and even if it stands up it doesn't have the strength for something this big so probably I should have used interfacing on both sides, I only used it in one so that was a little mistake on my part and also there is another reason and that is that I trimmed my interfacing quite short and ideally I should have made it a bit longer so it got all the way here so it has more surface to sit like that on the color so if you're doing it remember to make the interfacing a little bit longer so it can just like be completely straight and it will create a little bit of strength as I was not willing to remake my color, in order to reinforce it slightly, I decided to attach a piece of cross grain ribbon around the neck. This helped a little bit keeping my color up and it also happened to look quite cute, so win-win. And only the closure was left. I sew a couple of buttons to my cloak and I attached a piece of elastic to my chain because I figured out if I wanted to get off my cloak quickly this was probably going to be more effective than using hooks. Ok, 
Okay, as you can see, I finished the cloak and now I need a dress to go with it, but unfortunately I don't have one right now because I did buy one which was absolutely perfect for Mavis and of course my niece decided that she wanted to be Mavis as well and she just took it and I never got it back as it usually happens. So yeah, I don't have any dresses that will work for it and honestly it's just gonna be more of an inconvenience for me to go looking for one than making one myself. So I cut all the pieces on the stretch velvet fabric that I had left from the Morticia Adams cosplay I made last year. So, let me go through it very quickly. I sew the center back of my dress. Then I sew the shoulders, but not the sides. With my dress pieces fully opened, I pinned and sewed the sleeves. When the sleeves were done, I could then sew the sides. Finally, I attached the collar, which is simply a tube of fabric. And once I finished hemming the pieces, my dress was done. And I bet you want to see the final results, right? You asked for it! And this is how I made my Mavis Vampire cosplay, and I am pretty happy with how it turned out. I ended up pinning the collar to my dress to make sure it wouldn't flop, but other than that it did not fall once, which made me really happy. Once again, thanks to my patrons for supporting me through the process, actually they already know what my next cosplay is going to be, because in this channel I make cosplays all year round. You can subscribe to the channel for free if you want to know it too, you will just have to wait a little bit longer. I still have more Halloween content coming for you, so make sure to like this video to keep them coming. Thank you very much for watching, I will be seeing you in the next adventure, bye!